Thank you, Francesca. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Chong Yang. Um, I'm a postdoc in uh, the Pest and Environmental Adaptation Research Group at the University of Melbourne. I'm going to talk about endosymbiont, the amazing microbe that live within insects. Endosymbiont, what does it mean? Well, let's break it down. Endo means within and symbiont means together. And then the bio just means living. So basically we have organisms that are living together within one another. A bacteria is a prokaryotic cell. They are fairly simple and they are fairly small. And this is an uh, eukaryotic cell. We have, nuclear, we have nuclear and we have uh, organelles like mitochondrial. These bacteria cells became part of a cell and eventually live within the cells in a symbiotic relationship. This is generally occurs through co uh, evolutionary processes over thousands or even millions of years. This is, this is an insect cell infected with Wolbachia, a most common endosymbiotic bacteria in insects. This is a part from a P. aphid embryo infected with Buchnera and Derigella. These endosymbionts affect certain uh, physiological processes in the host insect. Endosymbionts exist in many insect species. Each species is infected with different endosymbiont species or strains. Endosymbionts in insect exist in two forms, primary and secondary. For example, almost all aphid requires a primary endosymbiont book narrow that provides nutrients not obtained in sufficient quantities from plant phloem. In addition, aphids also be infected with one or more additional bacteria called secondary endosymbionts. Although not generally required uh, for survival and uh, reproduction, uh, those secondary endosymbionts exert diverse effects on host. As I just mentioned, Wolbachia is the most commonly found secondary endosymbiont in insect. It has the capacity to confirm phenotypic effects related to reproductive uh, activities and fitness cost on their hosts. We can see um, here, Wolbachia infected males that mate with uninfected um, female don't produce a viable offspring. This is called um, cytoplasmic incompatibility. So only um, male mosquitoes are released, which then mate with wild females will reduce female uh, fertility so that we can reduce mosquito population sizes through cytoplasmic incompatibility. Wolbachia have recently been um, introduced into dengue vector mosquitoes such as Aedes, Aedes aegypti and Aedes apopictus through microinjection, initially using a Wolbachia strain uh, found in Drosophila melanogaster. For microinjection, we use a very fine glass needle to pipette um, hemolym from donor and then inject it into recipient embryo under a microscope. The introduction of Wolbachia into these mosquitoes reduces their ability to spread the disease amongst human populations by um, either suppressing the population or um, by directly blocking the mosquito's dengue transmission ability. This strategy is now being used in large scale release around the world in places like uh, Malaysia and Singapore. 
This, uh, this is our collaborative study with researchers from Malaysia. It shows the uh, WALBB Wabakia infection can successfully in invade Malaysian field populations of Aedes aegypti mosquitoes, which are responsible for dengue transmission. Looking at uh, the figures of Wabakia frequency, the strain was successfully established and maintained at very high population frequency at the release sites. Based on uh, monitoring, reduced human dengue incidence was observed in the release sites when compared with those control sites. The WALBB strain of Wabakia provides the promising option as a tool for dengue control, particularly in very hot climates. Another, co uh, another collaborative study with agricultural researchers from China has developed Wabakia-based approaches from the, uh, for the protection of plants from insect pests and their associated diseases. We recently reported stable introduction of Wabakia into the brown plant hopper, the most destructive rice pest. The Wabakia strain WSTRI from the small brown plant hopper was transferred into this new host where it showed high, uh, very high level of uh, cytoplasmic incompatibility. Furthermore, this WSTRI Wabakia can inhibit infection and the transmission of rice virus of viruses, and uh, it can uh, mitigate it, mitigate virus induced uh, symptoms in rice plants. We can see very clearly here. That's a really good uh, comparison. This study opens up the development of Wabakia based strategies against major agriculture pests and they are transmitted um, pathogens. Um, our team is currently involved in new research to extend these findings as part of a collaboration with CESA called the Australian Grand Pest Innovation Program, AgPIP. Experiments, especially on PFIDs, have demonstrated that the secondary endosymbionts protect against um, parasitoid wasps and uh, um, entomopathogenic fungi. Um, they can also uh, eliminate the effects of heat and influence host plant uh, suitability. We are looking into ways to manipulate endosymbionts in these pest efforts to reduce the impact of direct feeding damage and uh, virus transmission. This will be achieved through um, transfers of particularly uh, endosymbionts from one effort into another, as well as the suppression of endosymbionts in pest species through heat and chemical treatments. So um, firstly, we conducted a survey of endosymbionts for key aphid species in Australia. We want to select endosymbiont species as candidates for downstream microinjection. The bar chart here shows the interesting secondary endosymbionts we have found so far. We found serratia in growth aphid and pea aphid. We also found Rickettsiella in corn aphid and pea aphid, and so on. The primary endosymbiont Bucnera colored in gray was identified in all samples and was by far the most abundant taxon. Based on, uh, based on those uh, screen results, uh, pea aphid and the rose aphid have been used as donors for micro, for micro injection. We have established a stable Riquet Ciela infected old aphid and green peach aphid colonies through micro injection. In much the same way as endosymbiont bacteria block 
dengue transmission, they may also block the transmission of plant viruses spread by aphids. Because of this, manipulations and deliberate releases can lead to displacement of local populations by strains that carry endosymbionts with desirable attributes, like um, reduced virus transmission capacity, uh, increased pesticide uh, susceptibility, and increased susceptibility to nature enemies. So uh, if successful, this research program has the potential to provide a different approach to post management that could improve the long term prof uh, profitability of farming practices from both an environmental and uh, business perspective. So here is the summary. Um, so now we know uh, the endosine balance. They are very abundant. They are very uh, diverse. Uh, they are everywhere. And they are the most important. They are non-genetic, genetically modified organism. Uh, the endosine balance can decrease the disease transmission, can suppress population after spread, um, can uh, increase susceptibility to nature enemies, but we still have a lot of things to discover. So that's all for me today. Thanks for listening.